In this video, we're going to look at finding exponential functions. In particular, we're going to determine exponential functions modeling given situations, and we're going to find the formula for exponential functions uh, through get two given points or representing an exponential graph that, that we're given. We begin by considering this example, uh, which involves us having to find an exponential function that models a given situation. Here we're told that the population of India was around 1.25 billion in 2013 and has an annual growth rate of about 1.2%. We want to know the approximate population of India in 2031. In order to answer this question, what we need to do is first find a function of the form f of x equals a times b to the x, um, some exponential function here, which models our situation um, and then use this and evaluate it at the appropriate value of x to give us the population in 2031. The value of a is basically given to us. a, we recall, is the initial value of our quantity. And so if we're looking, um, basing this all on the population of India in 2013, a is going to be the population of India in 2013, which is 1.25 billion. Uh, here we're going to just let a be 1.25, and we're going to measure everything in this example in billions. We need to be a little careful when finding the value for b here. Um, it's obvious why one might think the value of b is 1.2%, um, but we do need to be careful because 1.2% is the growth rate. This means that each year the population increases by 1.2%. Um, in order to find the value of b, what we need to do is find the percent change of the population. So in other words, we need to find a growth factor, a number that we can multiply a population by to obtain the population in the next year. Right? We can easily figure out um, this number by considering um, the 1.2% the growth rate. Um, so um, as a sort of an abstract example, um, the population next year will be the current population, which I'm going to write as 100% of the current population, plus 1.2% uh, of the current population. And now we can add these two things together, 100% and 1.2% of a population would be 101.2% of the population. And so what we see here is we have a growth factor of 101.2%, which as a decimal is 1.012. So this will be the base of our exponential function. Anytime we know a population in one year, we can multiply that population by 1.012, and that will have the same effect as adding 1.2% of that population to that population. So putting all of that together, we see that our function f of x um, that models our population of India can be written as 1.25 times 1.012 raised to the x power, where x is the number of years after 2013. We choose x to be this particular quantity because our initial value, 1.25 billion, is the population in 2013. Um, so to find the population in 2031, what we observe is that 2031 is 18 years after 2013. And so we need um, to let x be 18 and compute f of that value. So the population in 2031 will be f of 18. Uh, so this will be 1.25 times 1.012 raised to the 18th power. Um, because of the decimals here, um, there is um, no reason to do anything other than to use a calculator and compute this value. And when we do, we see we get approximately 1.549. 
Um, and we do need to remember that this number is in billions. Um, so our population is going to be about 1.549 billion. So a little bit more than one and a half billion people in India are at which should be the approximate population in 2031. In this example, we're told that in 2006, 80 deer were introduced into a wildlife refuge. By 2012, the population had grown to 180 deer, and we also know that the population was growing exponentially during this time. We're asked to find a function n of t representing the population of deer over time t. In other words, we want to find a function of n um, a function n of variable t of the form a times b to the t. Um, we're asked to use the variable t here for time, and we are told the population is exponential, so we know that it has the form a times b to the t. Um, since, this, since the deer were introduced in 2006, the value of a is our initial value, is the number of deer that were there in the, the population initially, which we are told is 80. And so we know that our function n of t will have the form 80 times b to the t. All we need to do now is find the value of b. Um, in order to find b, what we're going to use is the other fact that we're given here, and that is in 2012, which would be when t is 6, because 2012 is 6 years after 2006, um, we know that n of 6 is 180. There were 180 deers in 2012. So when t is 6, n is 180. Um, if we substitute that into um, our formula for n of t that we have a little bit ago, we see that 80 times b to the 6th power, all right, that is b to the 6th power. I apologize for it. Um, looking, my b's and 6's looking very similar, but that is 80 times b to the 6 equals 180. Um, we want to solve this equation for b. In order to do that, we can divide both sides by 80. So we have b to the 6 equals 180 over 80, uh, which ends up simplifying to 18 over 8, or 9 fourths. And we can compute b um, by taking the sixth root of 9 fourths. Uh, now, it, um, this is a perfectly good number as it is, but if we did want to approximate it, what we would need to do is raise the number 9 fourths to the 1 sixth power. Uh, so recall that um, the sixth root is the same thing as raising to the 1 sixth power. And so this is how we could use a calculator to approximate this value. And when we do that, we get that this is approximately 1.1447. And so our final formula here, putting all of this together, is that n of t is equal to 80 times 1.1447 to the t power. And this... Um, this formula here uh, will give us this function that we're looking for, um, where t is the number of years after 2006. In this example, we want to find an exponential function that passes through the points negative 2, 6, and 2, 1. Uh, this is somewhat similar to the example that we just did involving the deer population um, without an application. Uh, but it is a little bit more complicated because we're not directly given the initial value. In that example, we were told that the initial value was 80, and so we could start right away by saying our value of A was 80 and then finding B. In this case, we again want to find f of x equals A times B to the x, but we're not given the value of A right away. Uh, we need to find both A and B using these two given points that, go, that satisfy our function. Um, in order to do this, what we can do is substitute both pairs of points into our function, which will create two equations involving a and b. If we use negative 2, 6, um, we get the function value, which is the y value of 6, will be equal to a times b raised to the x value of negative 2. 
And if we use the point 2 comma 1, uh, we will get the function value of 1 equaling a times b to the x value of 2. All right, so we now have these two equations, and we have two unknowns, a and b, that we need to solve for. Uh, there's a couple different ways that you could do this algebraically, uh, but one um, sort of straightforward way is to take the two terms on the right-hand side, the terms involving a and b, and dividing one by the other. So here I might take a times b squared, uh, the right side in the second equation, and I might divide it by a times b to the negative second power, which is the right side of the first equation. This will then in turn be equal to the same um, fraction generated by the numbers on the left-hand side. Um, so our numerator in our fraction here is the, the second equation. So on the other side, we're going to have a numerator of 1. And the denominator is the part of the first equation. And so our denominator here will be 6. So we get a times b squared divided by a times b to the negative second power will equal 1 sixth. Uh, this is a kind of a nice equation because whatever value a happens to be, which we don't know at this point, will cancel on this side of the equation. And we have a b to the negative second power, which we can move to the numerator uh, because of the negative exponent, and the exponent will become positive when we do this. Um, and so when we simplify the left-hand side, the a's will cancel out completely, and what we're left with is just b squared times b squared. And that, of course, has to equal 1 sixth. Um, b squared times b squared, we have to add the exponents there, so we have b to the fourth is equal to 1 sixth. And to find the value of b, or at least to approximate the value of b with a calculator, um, we're going to take 1 sixth and raise it to the 1 fourth power. This is equivalent to finding the, the fourth root of that number. And using a calculator, that is approximately 0 0.6389. And so this is the value of b um, for our particular um, function, a times b to the x. Once we know this value of b, we can substitute it into one of our two equations involving a and b that we saw earlier. Uh, for example, maybe we substitute it into this one because it has a positive exponent, and that will be a little bit easier to, to deal with. So substituting that into our equation, we're going to get 1 equals a times the value of b, which we just saw was 0.6389 uh, squared. And so our value of a is going to be 1 divided by 0 0.6389 squared. And if we uh, use a calculator here, we see that this is approximately 2.4492. And so, using the values of a and b that we've determined, our function f of x uh, should be approximately 2.4492 times 0 0.6389 raised to the x power. Now, of course, both of those values of a and b are, are rounded uh, to four decimal places, so this is not exactly um, accurate, but it is, with, it is accurate to within um, the within four decimal places. In this example, we want to find the equation for the exponential function shown in the graph on the right side of the screen. Um, in order to do this, much like the last couple examples, we really just need to find two points on this graph. Uh, because we have the entire graph here, and because the value corresponding to x equals 0 is a really nice number, it uh, looks like we go through the point 0, 3, um, we can see right away that um, the value of a in our function, all right, which we know has this form f of x equals a times b to the x, we see right away that a is going to equal 3. And that's the initial value or the value when x is equal to 0. So now we can look here. We want to find another point that has, a ni that has uh, nice coordinates, and we might look here and notice that it looks like this graph goes through the point uh, 2, 12. So when x is 2, uh, we get a y value of 12. We could substitute that point into our equation. Um, and so we know we're going to have our function value of 12 to be 3, which is what the value of a we just found to be, 
times b raised to the second power. Um, we can then solve this for b. We can divide both sides by 3 and get 12 divided by 3, which is 4, is equal to b squared. And when we take the square root of both sides here, uh, we do need to remember to take a plus or minus. So this is going to be b equals plus or minus 2. Now, because we're talking about an exponential function, our base b must be positive, and so we can conclude that b is going to be positive 2. Um, we can exclude the negative here, but I mentioned that this, this property that when we take the square root of both sides, we need, do need to consider positive and negative values, um, just so that um, when we see this later in the course, it is, um, it is um, there. Um, in this case, we now have a and b, and so our function f of x is going to be the function 3 times 2 to the x. And this is the um, equation that gives us our graph shown here.